The tomahawk, the name who changed uh, everything you would expect out of a mid-budget motherboard, because yes, $300 is now mid-budget. This is the life we live in. Humphier VRM, Humphier Specs, the tomahawk humphers everything it touches. Today, we're reviewing the excellent Mac Z890 Tomahawk Wi-Fi from MSI, a board here to remind you that to get a real engineer level knowledge of your motherboards, you want to subscribe to my channel. Just don't mind the smell. Now, starting with the obvious. This year, the Tomahawk comes with a lean yet adequate 680X PCB layers, which is the minimum required to avoid PCIe 5 and 4 signal interferences and ensure a long lasting product. I would have preferred uh, an 8 layered. A PCB to reinforce the VRM cooling abilities of the board and to better compete against the tough, which I have reviewed last month and you should be uh, checking if you haven't done so yet. But yes, six is fine. It, it's it's plenty and, and I'm okay with it. Now, design-wise, well, since uh, uh, the Z790 Tomahawk Max uh, from last year, we have seen MSI going towards a more punk theme with more granular surfaces, softer angles, and the very noticeable neon green underlines. Some of you liked it, some of you didn't. I, I personally love it. Manufacturers are experimenting and taking risks, and that I love. And thankfully, no tacky embedded RGB, which I upload. And in the case you did not agree with me, you still have four RGB connectors to show to the world what a wonderful person you are. Now, CPU socket twice. Our new LGA 1851 can support the brand new Ultra uh, class of Intel processors, which features 151 more pins than the departed LG 1700 in order to give us a little more bandwidth in the form of additional PCIe 5.0 lanes. Now, chipset-wise, well, we have our brand new Z890 chipset, which brings a couple of noticeable changes. It phased out all of its PCIe 3.0 lanes, converted them in faster but fewer PCIe 4.0 lanes, but most noticeably, we have four brand new additional PCIe 5.0 lanes, which finally give Intel a shot at competing against AMD motherboard this year. Now, VRM-wise, well, we do have a slight bump with a 1990 amps power stages configuration uh, organized in a 16 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 configuration, 1440 amps of which are CPU centric. Now, knowing that the Ultra 9 uh, is so much more power efficient than what we had before with the 14th generation of core processors, it's obviously more of a future proofing. Uh, uh, move. Uh, there's a future generation of ultra processors will need more power and so we have uh, a heavily uh, equipped power solution. So this is more than you'll ever need to push the current generation of Ultra 9 to the very limit, which by the way is a horrible processor to overclock with. That, that's that needs a separate video altogether. Speaking of which, um, we have those two massive individual VRM blocks which do feature a double contact design for a more intimate heat relief. The thermal pads are fresh, sticky and wet, which is precisely what I want out of you, MSI. Uh, fresh, sticky and wet thermal pads. Now, our main block extended roof has plenty of radiating surface and tops a rather thick wall to store a maximum of harvested heat. Our side block is tall and dense and features several deep winglets to maximize a direct air contact. And the thermal results are as expected. Our temperatures stay in a comfortable operating range and far from any overheating risks. My only critic here will be the noticeably hotter side block. N nothing really concerning here, but we could have avoided this uh, uh, delta, this difference of temperature between these two blocks with a simple heat pipe, which would have spread it evenly uh, the heat uh, among both of the blocks. So maybe something to take into consideration for the next year iteration of the Tomahawk. Overall, uh, I'm giving a solid 7.5 out of 10. 
in terms of scoring, and I would not expect this motherboard to be coupled with anything less than an Ultra 7. So yeah, very happy, very strong, and a big kudos to MSI for this. RAM-wise, our board can support up to 256 GB of DDR5 RAM in a dual-channel configuration with a maximal data transfer of 9,200 million transfers per second. <laughs> That is fast. It's about 1,500 empties more than we've seen on the Tomahawk Max, which is what, only four or five months old. So quite of a delta here. But there are only two things which you really want to know here and pay attention to. This is a single stick uh, a maximum data transfer rating, meaning that if you populate the entire dual channel here, you'll be lucky to have half of that. Now, staying in the memory, well, that's where our extra PCI 5.0 lanes are put to good use. We have four M.2 solid-state drive connectors and four uh, vintage uh, SATA 3 plugs. Most importantly, we have a fully PCIe 5.0 loaded connector, which will transfer data at double the speed that you could uh, and can on the other three M.2 solid-state drive. All of them benefit from thick thermopadded heat plates, but uh, again, most critically here, yeah, two of them have latches which allow for an easy screwless removal. Talking of DIY, let's mention our again screwless connectors which have been redesigned and are now much more sturdy. Expansion wise, we have our familiar 316 slots and as usual, the closest one to your CPU receives a full 16 PCIe 5.0 treatment. Therefore, this is why you want to see your GPU placed for optimal performances. A special mention to the brand new MSI GPU eject mechanism, which is, well, probably the best one out there on the market. And there is even a little padlock icon to let you know if the export slot lot is in a locked position or not. It's a simple, gradual evolution, the like of which I love. Now, the two other exports are surprisingly well-fed, which, despite not being GP-worthy, will be plenty for some PCIe-based uh, storage. Now, the best part of all this is the fact that thanks to those four extra PCIe 5.0 lanes, we can operate our PCIe 5.0 enabled M.2 solid state drive as well as a full speed GPU export. I'll remind you that this was not possible on Intel motherboard last year. So no annoying and awkward bifurcation for once. What you see is what you get. Now, back IO wise, well, apart from our usual USB plugs, which are quite fast and plenty on this model, we have two Thunderbolt 4 plugs, which means 2 times 40 gigabit per second worth of data swap, fast charging for your phone, and DisplayPort outputs for our integrated graphics, which, in my opinion, on its own, bump the standing of this board a notch higher. Connectivity wise, again, we have a nicely updated range with an upgraded 5 gigabit LAN against 2.5 before that and a low latency Wi-Fi 7 with a full 5.8 gigabit per second worth of data transfer, not half of it. I'm looking at you, Asus. Finally, we have a very good, very nice ALC 1220p audio codec from Realtek, cleansed by about 320 microfarads worth of capacitors. It's not the most amazing integrated audio solution, but something which will provide you a rich eight channel a uh, um, gaming experience if you want to, and also a, a very, most importantly, a very clear recording experience. Not, I didn't detect any kind of static interferences, and, and that's what you want for a good streaming experience. Overall, um, I'm home. I feel warm. I feel comfortable with this back IO. I don't have most of everything, but what's there is premium and gives me agility in my day-to-day -day bandwidth adventures. Nothing but good things uh, going your way. MSI. Front panel connector wise, well, apart from the usual suspects, we have a few nice novel things I want to point out. We got this nice 20 gigabit per second front panel type C, which, provided this 8-pin plug is powered, will super fast charge your phone, which might seem like a little accessory to you. But I love it. I, I refuse to live in a world without it. That's how central it is to my existence. And then come this, and hold on to your knickers. This is a Thunderbolt 5 connector. You heard that right. This board can be upgraded with a Thunderbolt 5 card. I mean, 
if I had been MSI, um, I would have plastered this right on top of this motherboard website and packaging. I had to dig to uh, to finally find out that there was a Thunderbolt 5 plug. And it's a big deal. It's a really big one. Just saying. Now, as cooling goes, well, we got our usual fan connectors. But the real novelty here is the Easy Connector, which made its debut this year and is here on its own to support a complete all-in-one water cooling solution, which means an easier all-in-one water cooling installation and a neater cable management. And here comes what is probably the best part, the troubleshooting. It is definitely the most complete you will see at that price range. We have our first eight debugger, flashback and clear CMOS for an easy CPU-less BIOS upgrade, but most importantly, we have an error code screen which will precisely pinpoint why your motherboard is giving you such a hard time today. Um, never did I see such a complete troubleshooting solution on a, a below $300 motherboard. We usually see these kind of features on the Carbon, uh, on the Rock Streaks, motherboards who are more expensive. So extremely happy, revigorated to see this here on the Tomahawk. And by doing this, MSI is absolutely putting the pressure on its competition. In one word, absolutely refreshing. Now, in conclusion, the Mag Z890 Tomahawk Wi-Fi will cost you about 290 bucks before taxes, which is, what, $50 more expensive than its Z790 edition. Looking at what was available last year and what is available from the competition, it feels like MSI has quietly listened to all our critics and desires, probably by watching my channel again, and took this year opportunity to uh, incorporate them all into the Z890 Tomahawk. The VRM is solidly future-proofed. We have a very clever and simplified bandwidth usage on PCIe exports, no bifurcations. We have a lot of DIY upgrades, bandwidth connectivity, and even cooling upgrades. And finally, the troubleshooting solution is simply going into premium motherboard territories. In every segment of this review, it really feels like MSI has streamlined is engineering or manufacturing approach uh, to get rid of all the non-essentials and uh, uh, to refocus it on an easy to use, easy to upgrade, uh, sturdy and powerful foundation for your build. And these are, you know, strong words. It's not what I usually say. It's rare to have that many confluent qualities going in one single product. And, you know, I have received MSI's uh, uh, very own Z890 Carbon. And if I were this motherboard, they're not persons, but if I were, uh, I'd be very worried because I'm not sure why I would want to spend $200 more for, you know, when I have the Tomahawk Z890 provides so much. But we will find out as we do the review. And until then, I wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year.